second uh, big one-day final of the season at Lords, involving the two sides atop the county championship, uh, took some time to get underway. It attracted the usual big crowd, but they were kept waiting because of a spatter of rain. It delayed the start by 50 minutes, by which time Keith Fletcher, the Essex captain, after earnest deliberation with his senior henchman, decided that Middlesex should be put in. But before we see the action, a quick look at the two teams. The good news for Essex was that John Lever was fit to play, Norbert Phillip was named their 12th man, and Middlesex, of course, without Roland Butcher, in hospital after a serious facial injury. We're joining the innings in the first over. There's no score. John Lever bowling to Grand Bar. Quite a stroke to get away with. He did very well to reach it. Well, that's a better shot. That's fairly raced away over the upfield. There's a shot full of confidence. He pulled off one in the semi-final down at Canterbury that was uh, perhaps as good as that, but Foster's taken his first wicket. Wolf Slacker's gone with ten runs on the board. Slack out for one, and Barlow is eight not out. What a fine catch from Graham Gooch. Uh, useful delivery, this, from Foster going up the hill. Little edge and a brilliant catch by Graham Gooch. Not only missed through his batting. Beautifully caught, low down to his right. Third, third man, Radley's off the mark. Again, almost a replay of that stroke in the first over. With Lever landing it right in the slot. Yes, a little bit surprising to see John Lever pitching the ball up quite so far to Graham Barlow. But he certainly timed that one beautifully. The front foot's on the way almost before the ball's delivered. Stand the gap again on the offside. So Barlow, three fours to his credit already, looking for a fourth, but uh, he should make th no, not three, even two for it. And these two are very good runners between the wickets. Radley over the years has been a marvellous runner between the wickets. Oh. And the bowling. So Foster takes Barlow with one that ducked into him. And Middlesex 25 for two, with Barlow gone, bowled by Foster for 14, and a well-deserved second wicket there for Neil Foster. Seeing it here from the nursery end, you see the ball dip in late there, and go on down the hill, and Graham Barlow played all round it. <coughs> it's tickled away down to long leg, where Lever comes in. Trusty left arm, a lovely throw. That's edged away. Well bowled there by Turner, brought uh, two or three back, got in looking for it the third time. The ball just nicely held its course. Oh. 
That's short, hooked away, four runs. So three short deliveries from uh, Derek Pringle have already been punished by Middlesex, and it brings the 50 up. 52 for two. Gatting going on to 11. Good shot. Straight between point and cover. And Gatting now goes on to 20. Good shot here from Mike Gadding. Rock back there, and uh, he's very strong on the pull and the cut, and uh, hit that without much problem for four runs. That outfield is very fast indeed. That's the time shot by Clive Bradley. That's the first expensive delivery from Graham Gooch. It's a good shot here from Clive Radley. Gets rocks back well there, and he's over the ball, and he's punished it uh, well through the uh, gap in the offside, and the speed of the outfield has carried that ball through for four runs. That'll race away down towards the tavern. Still over the three runs. If he's quick enough. And it's a good throw. Beautiful piece of work. Great piece of cricket there. And Neil Foster has turned and thrown in the one action. And that's to add to the two for 12 he has at the moment. What a fine performance he's putting up here at Lord's. Bradley punches this away on the leg side here and they go off and they're running very quickly here the turn and Mike Gatting's already made his mind up that he's going for the three Neil Foster picks it up it's a good throw over the top David is Mike Gatting sees he's struggling lunges in but as you can see he's well out his bat's still well in the air a good bit of fielding but uh, the side is and almost before we can say who he is Keith Tomlins has gone well, Keith Tomlins has gone back here to a good reasonably good length ball and he's played right round it and uh, they don't come much plum plumber than that Marlowe for 14 Slack for 1 getting for 22 and Tomlins no score 33 to Radley He's got that away finally, over pitched, clipped away quite beautifully by Radley for four. So Clive Radley moves on to 40 and the total on to 85 for four. Still down to uh, third man. And Gooch found himself in a fairly unusual spot down there. And he's got a fine arm as well. And Bury on eight now. Foster the bowler. That's locked in the air. Is he going to be safe? Really could have gone anywhere. Outside edge, high in the air. And just fell in a yard short of uh, Keith Fletcher's sprint. John Embry looking to clip this over mid-wicket. Came down the hill a little, outside edge. Lobbing over the top of Keith Fletcher, running back. Very, very awkward. Didn't quite get there. Well, Rudley's got a hold of that, all right. Short, and he plays that shot so well. Marvellous cutter, Clive Bradley, and it takes him through to 50. 51 out of 103 for four. And six fours in uh, five brothers, 50. That's down the wicket. Good clean hit there. 
And Brian Bunsen think it's time they push the score along and put Springle nicely over mid on for four. Give himself room there, picked it up nicely, quite a half volley, but just crushed it through the offside for four. Bradley goes on to 59. That step away, not trying to loft it well over the top of uh, short extra. Pringle again to Radley. Short wristy flick down the third man. Keith Punt getting two hands to it there. And this is uh, the uppercut. And that carries the short to deep third man. And Pont got both hands to it. It's high in the air. And very safely pouched by David East. So John Lever strikes. John Embry goes for 17, and Middlesex one, 23 for five. That's the second time he's tried to turn on the onside, caught the outside edge. This time, David East is underneath it, moving nicely into position and very safely holding it. Call it that. He got hands to it, but very, very difficult indeed. And a tremendous square cut this by Clive Bradley. And a terrific effort by Hardy. That's beautifully timed. Counting, clipping John Lever away behind square leg. The total now goes up to 133 for five. Five to Downton, 65 to Radley. And this very well picked up by Paul Downton. Downton's gone. And a little bit of panic in the Middlesex side now. 141 for six. Essex have had them pinned down all day. Fletcher has taken the catch there off Foster. He's taken three wickets. And it's all Essex at the moment. And Paul Downton trying to clip Foster over the top. And Keith Fletcher running back, taking a good catch. Is Foster now to go to Radley. Put it down. Radley will get a single. Stuart Turner's way out of mid off. So that's another difficult chance. Three of them now. And Radley trying to hit him over the top. And that going straight to Stuart Turner. Not an easy chance, but one that he won't be pleased about. It's over the top of uh, mid-off. Three to Edmonds. Neil Foster is the bowler. 150 comes up for Middlesex. Over Turner's head. Good hit. The 
witnessed by a whisker. It's a good ball here from Derek Pringle. Nipping back down the slope, but uh, unfortunately, if it had hit the stumps, I'm afraid it wouldn't have counted, as it was another no ball. He's having all sorts of problems with uh, his no balling and uh, his wide calling. Derek Pringle, as indeed he had in Australia. On uh, many occasions when I watched him bowl out there. He's done it this time. That's his first success of the day in his 10th over. You see Phil Edmonds here trying to hit this away. Anywhere would have done but where it went, unfortunately, for him onto the stumps. But uh, Derek Pringle probably thinking that deserves a wicket by now. And that's how it happened. Getting low down there. And uh, giving Derek Pringle his first success. 171 for 7 after 52.2. Just a foot or two inside the rope. Nice hit by Neil Williams. Good catch. Fine piece of cricket that by Pringle. Williams got it in the meat of the bat and smashed it back down the ground and Pringle just picked it up in his follow through as though taking a peach off a tree. Derek Pringle here going for the Yorker, just over pitching slightly, Williams coming down the wicket, hitting it reasonably firmly, but Derek Pringle is a big lad with long arms and he reached down and caught that quite comfortably. A good catch. signalled, they've picked up the extra run there and the total 196 for 8 at the conclusion of the 55 overs. Middlesex having been put into bat by Essex this morning. They've struggled their way up to 196, 197 to win for Essex and the hero of the Middlesex innings, Clive Bradley, 89 not out. So Graham Gooch has been in sparkling form just lately to face Wayne Daniel. So Graham Gooch gets the uh, Essex total move in with a single. Daniel to Hardy. Just flash the bat at that. It's gone through the covers, racing away for four. And a pitch ball put away quite superbly by Hardy. And that's beaten Tom Lins. After the chase at heart to stop it. I'm just going to pull it up inside and uh, Gooch quite happy with two for it. Cowns again. Gooch to face. Well, that's beaten Tom Lins again. This time it's certainly going for four. Perfectly timed, flicked away, shortest delivery from uh, Norman Cowns. And Essex already going into double figures. Shot of a man in form, clipped that off his legs. Racing up the hill to the boundary. Just found his form at the right time, uh, Graham Gooch. Big, two big scores in uh, one-day cricket in the last couple of weeks. Facing Scounds again. Repeats it through mid-wicket. 
And Norman Cowan sadly bowling short there to Graham Gooch, giving him all the time in the world to get on the back foot and put him away just where he likes. Cowan's again to Gooch. That's gone away for four more. And uh, Norman Cowan's having a rough passage here. Some sparkling shots coming from the bat of uh, Graham Gooch. He's taking 16 off that first over from uh, Norman Cowns. And another beautiful shot of his legs here. But really speaking, if you've got six fielders on the offside and you keep bowling there, you're going to be a hit for four. So Essex have rattled up 21 from the first two overs. And Mike Gatton has decided to relieve Norman Cairns, whose two overs have cost 20 runs. He places him uh, with Neil Williams. Hardy now to face Williams. And that's four runs too. And again, the pace bowler pitching it on the leg stump. It's been clipped away. Neil Williams again. Another no ball and the chase for Daniel. And another no ball. The 50 comes up as a result. Uh, not often at Lords as the 50 come up here in the uh, eighth over. We had a wicket for them. No need to run for that. Well, I'm quite certain the Middlesex players aren't enjoying this, but I can tell you I am. I always like watching this fellow bat. Brilliant stroke making. Perfect straight drive. And Graham Gooch didn't even bother to move. And he's gone. Well caught by Downton. Down on the offside, no slip there, and Downton had to make ground to it. Gooch is gone for 46. The first wicket goes down for 79 in the 12th over. Now can Middlesex fight back from here? Very good ball. That went slightly down the hill. Cowens. Nice return. from the Essex supporters. They called out Middlesex for 196 and now they're 100 for one with Graham Gooch out for 46. We get a couple there. It's nicely placed.
he is starting to flow now. There are a few jittery, jabby shots at the start from Ken McEwen. But he's looking good. Enthusiastic leap there from Edmonds, but no contact. It certainly looked a very good delivery, which it was. My goodness me, that turned. That's short and it's four. And McEwen's been waiting for that the whole time. That's slow and driven, it's been beautifully caught at cover. McEwen doesn't want to go, but he has to do in the end. A little nod from the umpire. And Norman Cowan's taking the magnificent catch there at short extra. A change of pace and a bit of flight from Edmonds. And McEwen kidded into the drive, falls to a fine catch at short extra. Yes, a little bit of flight here. Good piece of bowling by Edmonds. And... Ken McEwen hitting it a little bit into out. And a fine diving catch there by Norman Cowens. Well, the second very a bright knock we've seen from Essex today. McEwen following Guchin. Good Cowens, well, Edmonds, 34. The second wicket going down at 1 2 7. Shouts uh, gone up. And it only means four leg buys. And bowled from very wide and going down the leg side. So we're down to 62 now for Essex. 24 overs remaining. He's gone, yes. It's the value there of the man at Silly Point. Little edge there onto the pad and Fletcher goes. Edmund strikes again. Essex won 35 for three. Fletcher gone for three. A good piece of bowling by Phil Edmonds again. Getting Keith Fletcher forward. A little edge and a gentle catch to Silly Point. Yes, you see Keith Fletcher, he's drawn forward and he rather pushes at the ball a bit, back in front of the pad and like a good cricketer, he knows he's hit it, it's gone off the pad and seen it caught and he's on his way. Lucky escape indeed there. <laughs> and Keith Pont playing this one down on the leg side, getting there a little bit early. And really speaking, Norman Cowan should have certainly got a hand to it. I don't think he touched it at all. As it looks as though he could, in fact, have got two hands to it. and 50 up now. It's marvellous what a psychological difference it makes in the dressing room when that runs needed figure gets down below 50, which it is now. Oh, he's very 
lucky he's wearing a helmet. How lucky, we won't know until we can get a, a full frontal of him. Got him on the side and he's a bit shaky. And this ball from Neil Williams here, we were just talking about the short ball, he's banged it in very, very short and uh, it's almost as if Keith Pont lost it for a, a little while there and uh, took evasive action very late, but uh, hit him quite hard on the helmet. And uh, I think without the helmet, he'd have been struggling. Right, so we're just have a little look at this because he's not going off um, because he's been hit in the head. Just keep your eye on the bail as it is flicked off by the bat and Keith Pont is the fourth wicket down for Essex. 151 on the board and by the time he pulled himself together and went to pick up his bat someone had whispered to the umpire how was that and very quietly the finger went up and very quietly Keith Pont is going off. He's gone. And Middlesex are right back in the game now with five Essex wickets down. 156 for five. And Brian Hardy goes on 49. Pringle is one, and now the struggle is really on. That was a fine delivery, that, from uh, Norman Cairns. It was pitched well up to, up to Brian Hardy on about off stump and caught the outside edge. That was a good innings for his side there by Brian Hardy. He hung in there for 40 overs and played a, a good anchor roll. very much uh, three in a long time but uh, more than doubles the score there and brings some relief to uh, supporters and to the people up in the dressing room as well We've got that one away there through the uh, vacant mid-wicket area and uh, has got uh, one more nearer that total Essex require. That's a very useful four runs. Stuart Turner cooking that short delivery from Williams away for Ford. Mm. He's 
got hold of that. Hooked away down to deep long leg. But it's only one. Two men back there. Edmonds fine and Barlow square. So 176 for five. Uh, 21 more wanted. The second, are they? Yes, they are. He's coming back. And uh, that great long stride did its work for Derek Pringle. <laughs> oh, that's a cheeky piece of running. It uh, came off. Run to Gully on a misfield at this stage. Could have been calamity. Well, they got the five from the over, and that's important for Essex. Slight misfield by Clive Radley. Throw at the bowler's end. And if he'd hit, if he'd hit, Pringle would have been running. Seems that uh, Neil Williams will have to go off. Uh, Defy for five. That uh, cramp, whatever it is, has been uh, troubling him. So he goes off with Essex needing 12 or four overs. Still uh, five wickets in hand, but as Tom Graveney said a minute ago, it wouldn't be very handy for a new batsman to come out in this light now. So Daniel coming in again to Pringle. And he's out this time, brought one back, up goes Adelbird's finger, Eric Pringle has a look back, but uh, that won't do him any good, and he goes Elvi Debu to Daniel for 16. So this game of cricket still far from over, 185 for 6, east, east and leave it a come. So 12 wanted, 3 overs and 5 balls. And uh, David East to face. He's come a long way down. No I don't think he might have been gone to if that had hit. Tom wins the fielder. Well, no shortage of excitement here. He's off it. He's got to come back. And I reckon if he'd hit, he was gone. So the big swing away to Khan. He's caught it beautifully, and uh, the Middlesex boys will all be over to congratulate him. What a moment for him! Come out as uh, substitute fielder, John Carr, son of Donald Carr here at Lords, taking that catch very coolly and looking very much an old hand as he took it. But uh, I'm sure his old heart's going up and down at the moment. Stuart Turner trying to strike this one over the top, not quite middling it. And this a beautifully judged catch for a young man. Well taken. I bet he's feeling worse now than when, he, when the catch was coming to him. <laughs> well, he's, of course, a great comedian, but uh, there isn't too much to smile about at the moment. Essex wanting 10 off 14 balls. Three wickets left. Cowan's coming in in the dark. That's as good as anywhere. If you get an inside edge, which races away down for four runs. What a game of cricket this is now. So six wanted. 13 balls left. Three wickets to fall. And Cowan's in again. That's a good shot, and he's caught. Oh dear, how lucky he was, right off the meat of the bat. A brilliant catch there by Gatting. Knocked it up, caught it at the second time down, and it looked as though that was going to be a match-winning shot. What a remarkable game. 
crack straight to mid wicket and no one behind Mike Gatting a yard either way and Essex would have been 195 for seven young Foster have been bowled magnificently for Essex well I don't think after 10 overs he thought he was going to be needed but here comes Daniel into raised and that's a wide one nearer and uh, Mike getting what we're pleased about that Could be in the end that uh, Middlesex might lose this match on uh, no balls and wides. So Daniel again to East. And that was a more optimistic than ever. And I think it might be out. Yes, he's got out and out. Oh, what a circus this is turning out to be. And the crown of the piece again there was raised. And here we've got a perfect view of what's happened. Into the pad. And really there's never half a run there. And a super piece of fielding by Clive Bradley. Well, I can't believe that a few days ago when John Lever was lying on the operating table. He thought he'd be coming in at 192 for nine. At uh, quarter to nine. The last man in. And then over left after this. And still wanting another five runs to win. So what a good over that was from uh, Wayne Daniel and what a very vital one for Middlesex. 11 overs, one for 34. So uh, the crowd is ready to converge across this hallowed turf here at Lord's. 5-1 did, six balls left. And uh, Gatting has organised his field. So that he's got plenty of men out on the boundary. One, two, three, four, five men virtually out there. Another four inside. He knows that uh, a hearty swing and four runs would be fatal. As Cowens comes in to foster. And he's gone, he's bowled him, and it's all over, and Middlesex have won, and Foster is still there in the middle. Absolutely disappointed, dejected, and a sensational finish. Middlesex having no hope at all an hour and a half ago, have finally triumphed by a margin of four runs. Gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you. The president of MCC invites the director of Miss Benson and Hedges Limited, Mr. Derek Wilson, to present the Benson and Hedges Gold Cup to Mike Gatting. Well, both captains look very cheerful. Mike. Congratulations on a really quite astonishing victory. Yes, well, the lads uh, bowled their hearts out, fielded well, and uh, we just seem to keep getting wickets at the right time. So it's a um, tremendous team effort by everybody. Keith, what do I say to the Essex captain? You've endured a harrowing week because you lost what off the last ball on Wednesday, and you had this one apparently in the bag. You were 127 for one. We are 127 for one, boy. <laughs> well, this is obviously this is cricket, I'm afraid. You know, some games, you, you've never won a game, actually, until you've actually scored the winning run. You know, we proved it on Wednesday, we proved it again today. But, obviously, every side does this sort of thing. You know, we're not the first, we won't be the last. Right. 
The light was failing uh, pretty fast, wasn't it? It, uh, it yes. must have been pretty tense out there. Well, it was. I mean, due to the, the late start, it was always going to finish finish very late. We did well to, to stay out there as long as we did. Unfortunately, it was quite clear uh, late on, but it was always going to finish very late, and just one of those things. What was the atmosphere, Keith, in the Essex dressing room as the wickets ebbed away? <laughs> it's always fairly, always tense in a one-day game. Anyway, I thought we had it won when uh, Derek Pringle and Stuart Turner was in there at the end. But you know, like Mike said, they got wickets at the right time. Actually, I think the umpires are absolutely right to keep the game going as well. They could have come off with a bad light, but yeah, nice there was to a hear big, you say that. Yeah, they were absolutely right because there was a big crowd. Everything it was just the game had to be finished today. Graham Gooch set you on your way absolutely royally, and Neil Foster bowled jolly well too, didn't he? Yes, Gooch has been playing superbly lately, and Neil Foster, well, obviously, he's tremendous talent. There's a lot of talent there, I can assure yeah. you. And what about uh, the man? The senior pro, as it were, who made all the runs for you and held the whole thing together. He always seems to get them at the right time. And, uh, you know, when there's a battle on, he's always in there at the front fighting for us. And it's uh, tremendous to have somebody like that in the side. And on those words, cue the gold award winner. Here he is. Well played, Thanks Clive. Very much, what Peter. are your thoughts about this uh, remarkable win? Well, it was certainly the most exciting and best performance, I think, in the game that I played for Middlesex, mm -hmm. uh, comfortably. I, I, like everybody else, thought that we didn't have any chance, but we just uh, kept fighting. I had heard that Essex had had a couple of remarkable defeats uh, in recently when they'd lost a few wickets close to the end, and I just thought, well, can we? Can they do it again? And uh, fortunately for us, and unfortunately for them, it happened. Everything went right for us at the right time. We had a lot of luck, I think, during the game, but they had a large slice of luck, I think, in winning the toss. I think that made a big difference in this game, but well, through the rest of the game, I think we had a major part of the luck. But and uh, celebrations ought now to be starting in the Metropolitan Camp, Mike. No, no, we're not going to bother celebrating tonight. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thanks, Keith. Cheers, Pete.